So it took out all the mud that I had in the low end and I think I can even like bypass the processing. In this video, I'm gonna teach you a super simple creative technique that not a lot of people are talking about. And if you apply it in the correct way, you can make your mixes sound wider, deeper, and dynamically, you can bring way more life and movement to your music without adding more sounds to your tracks, which is quite important. So let me show you a track, a real life example, and then I'm gonna teach you step-by-step step what I did and what this technique is about. This technique is all about filtering, as I said in the beginning of this video. And not a lot of people use filtering to its full potential. So let me walk you through what I did uh, in the video, how like I made this sound. So I'll talk about the EQ and compression, the filtering most importantly, and then you will understand how to do it uh, for your own tracks. And before I dive deep into the topic of today's video, a really, really quick announcement. I want to make my online education coaching courses accessible for everyone. So I have started a school group. It's an online community where I'm going to be putting out exclusive content, courses, sound banks for synthesizers. Uh, I'll be doing contests uh, and a lot, a lot more. And also if you're looking for a more expensive and premium, my group or one-on-one -on -one flagship uh, coaching program, uh, all the links are down below. Okay, so let's start with the video. I'm gonna teach you how to use filters like a pro. I first wanted to play you the sound before uh, I did any filtering. So I had the problem that I just couldn't fit the sound into the arrangement. It was taking like too much space. And this is the sound on its own. So it's pretty bassy, it's pretty heavy, and uh, I just wanted to put it somehow in the track, so I started playing with filters. So really, really quickly, uh, so you understand my thinking process, I did a little bit of uh, low end compression. Here, the next thing is the EQ here, again, to filter out the mud. The next plugin is going to be, this is the analog EQ emulation. So I did a cut at around 360 and um, that's like minus, minus five, minus six in here, minus five at 200 Hertz. But the juiciest part is this filter. So I'm gonna teach you how to do it with standard plugins, although like I don't recommend it, this plugin is so much better. So you can see here, we have a lot, a lot of filters. And why I love this plugin so much is because you can do mid, you can do left, you can do right, you can do side, and you can combine those filters uh, and just, just check, check out the sound. So it took out all the mud that I had in the low end and I think I can even like bypass the processing. Nah, I think it's, it's, it's too basic. But anyway, by using multiple filters, you can almost bend your like uh, dimension so the sound feels like more psychedelic. And for the type of music that I'm making, like minimal psychedelic, it's a really, really amazing tool. Right, so let me show you uh, what I did here, right? So I'm gonna use one, uh, the same plugin, but I'm gonna set it up from scratch, right? Can I, can I do it here? Nah, I don't think so. So we're gonna need a filter. In this case, let me disable everything. And I really like using a uh, bandpass. So the first step, uh, what I usually like doing is let's use an LFO to control the movement of the filter. And just by doing this thing alone, again, it can give you so much, right? So let's make it more slow. The next thing that I like doing is the envelope follower. So what we can do here is 
we can make the filter react to the dynamics of the sound, right? So if I do... So you can see it has additional movement. And again, depending on the dynamics, it can be plucky, it can be more smooth, right? The next thing that we want to do here, I want to switch to mid side. So this one is, uh, I think it's, it's mid, right? Yeah. Now let's work a little bit more on the other band. So for example, we can do like, we can use the LFO to control the frequency. And then the same thing we can do on this side, right? Yeah, this is the side. And let's move this one as well. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on like tweaking the individual settings, the most important thing is for you to understand the concepts, what we did and why it works. So again, by using multiple filters in mid side, you can shape the sound and you can take out the mud and you can put it in a really like nice dimension in your track, right? So the next step that we can do, let's put a little bit of uh, delay onto the sound and a little bit of reverb. So you can now see um, the next steps. Right, so you can see that we made a really cool like sequence, um, atmosphere, what whatever this is called, right? From a pretty heavy sound, like bass heavy, and it's like so, so simple, right? Again, I'm gonna go back to my old settings because I think uh, I like this one a lot. And then you can tweak the filter to your taste and then of course like depending on the mix right so maybe you want to have something different i think i'm going to tweak the settings at the end of today but then again this this is really everything that that you have to know so now to wrap up this video i want to show you how you can achieve the same thing but uh with the standard plugins so if we use the standard uh lfo Right, so for example, we can do, uh, let's go to modulators. We use LFO here. So now the LFO is going to control the, the EQ, right? We can do, we can do something like uh, EQ8. And then you want to set it into uh, mid side, right? So mid side, for example, we can do on the mid, let's say we want to do something like this. And then I'm going to map the, uh, the LFO to the frequency. And let's do, let's do it really slow. And now let's do the same thing, but now we're going to work with the sides of the sounds. So in this case, I want to do one more LFO and I want to uh, map it to the side. And then we can use another LFO to map it to the gain. So you can see like it, it takes way more time to set it up in Ableton. But then again, if you don't for some reason want to use the Fat Filter plugin, it's okay. Like you, you can do this like literally for free. Pretty. It's a pretty similar effect. But then again, if you want to spend more time, that's okay. So 
that's that's really the logic okay so that was it for this video really chill really short video today just wanted to start my week productive and give you some value and share uh, some of like cool little techniques and tricks that i learned by finishing my old tracks from 2020 so stay tuned for more content i'm going to be making more videos this week and yeah if you want to check out my community all the links are down below thank you guys for watching and i see you guys in the next one bye